So good morning and welcome back to SeaWorld Orlando, one of the fun places for us to come out for coasters and excitement. Um, we came on over though today for a couple reasons. One, we want to see if we can try to get on some of the coasters because last time we came it was really busy and we couldn't actually get on anything really. But also just a few days ago SeaWorld put out a teaser for their brand new 2020 coaster. So we do think we know where it's going, what it's gonna, what it, uh, we're gonna put out our predictions, what we think it's gonna be, where is it going and what is it gonna look like kind of thing. So. Um, it's very actually kind of interesting because it looks like it's not going to be just a simple little ride. It looks like it's going to have some interesting elements to it. So, but also see what else we can do today. Maybe ride Kraken, maybe do uh, Manta. But also go check out, see if we can go over to the uh, Wild Arctic area and do that. So, just head on, head on in. Have some fun. It is a little warm today, so we're going to probably take it a little easy. Something we haven't been able to do for some time. Every time we come over, the dolphin nursery area has been closed off and usually the water's pretty low. So. Um, today, we might be able to come over and see the dolphins. Look like they're about to do something though with the, the baby dolphins. They have a bunch of people over along the side, so, but it's been, last time we came it was closed for cleaning and then they had it also down kind of short, with the water pretty low. So, we don't know what was going on. So it looks like today we actually come over. We maybe took them out a little bit later as well, when they're, cause it looks like they're doing activities over here. Oh, oh there's one. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> One of the things though, I don't know if we'll get to do it this year, and something we always love coming during the summertime is SeaWorld has Electric Ocean, but they look like they're only doing it on the weekends this year, which is going to be really upsetting, because it's one of our favorite things to do every summer for SeaWorld, because then we can come out a little bit later, it's a little bit darker, also that means we don't have to deal with the heat as bad, so only downside to that, so, but I think we're going to keep, we're usually going to do our normal path, we're going to head over towards... I guess towards the Shark Wreck Reef area, see see what Mako's wait time looks like. Maybe try to do Mako, then go over towards Infinity Falls. Don't think we'll do Infinity Falls today. Um, and then maybe head to Wild Arctic and into the area where the new coaster is probably going to be going. We'll tell you, it's kind of funny as we walk through this area, this always has the loudest music and usually the most copyrighted music. So, But you can see for Electric Ocean, they put up some of these like colorful like banner things that they put up. And I wonder if night the lights light up and makes it even more cool to see. So I just wish we, I wish, I'm just kind of hoping as we get into the um, summertime, maybe they'll have more of like Monday nights, Tuesday nights, so we can come out and see Electric Ocean, which we love to come to. It looks like Mako is about a 10 minute wait. Since it's, it's only 10 minutes, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get ourselves a locker and go ahead and do it and wait a little bit of time for it. So here's some of the, like I guess here's one of the spots and it has Southern Barbecue Sunday, which sounds really weird. Mac and cheese bites, frozen water, melon lime margarita and craft beers. Pretty interesting. We really want to come to Summer Nights or Electric Ocean. Summer Nights is, Summer Nights is, um, what do you call it? Bush Gardens, Electric Ocean is this one. So the Southern Barbecue Sunday and the Mac and cheese bites would be right here in front of the little, uh, right in front of this little area, this little uh, theater that you're heading towards Infinity Falls. So 
again, it's one of those things I'm gonna really sad if we don't get to do an electric ocean this year. Electric ocean is one of our favorite things. They have a frozen hot chocolate that I always like to get every year, and it's always delicious. I'll tell you what, perfect way to beat the heat today is this ride. You know what's funny? We've only done this ride once still. We'll do it eventually. Ah, oh. Yes. Also, it doesn't look like it's a very long wait today. I like how tiny the boats are. The boats are really small. Oh, the, they're going down to the big drop that I got soaked on the first time we rode it. Oh, that was super fun. Yes, uh, it was, yeah. The photo, the photo setup is pretty cool because they have four different set photos pointed at each corner of the boat so you actually get a picture of yourself on it. So now it's making our way through Sesame Street. Honestly, it doesn't feel very busy like at all at SeaWorld today. I was expecting to be really busy, but like coming into this area, it doesn't feel that busy at all. Well, it's a very nice little area. I wonder, like, remember, so we were at Bush Gardens. Oh yeah, it does. Look, <laughs> Big Bird. <laughs> Big Bird at his nest. That's funny. <laughs> but, but I tell you what, Sesame Street is. This is the whole area is designed really well, and I like it. Like it really, it really brings in more. But like I was saying, is I wonder if they'll do something like there at Bush Gardens and have stuff for the 50th anniversary. Probably. Hopefully. Uh, Sesame Street and uh, our Bush Gardens and Sea World have like the same Sesame Street stuff, so they would. They would have, yeah. They would know it would be the yeah. So, quick little walk through Sesame Street. So now we're kind of coming up to where the wild Arctic area is, and the con the new 2020 coaster looks like it's going to be themed towards something Arctic, but also a kind of straight down drop. So I don't think it'll be like Shikra dive coaster, but I do think it's going to be a small launching coaster. But I do think this will inquire this whole back area right here, getting a re-theming into something brand new. Um, there's some rumor that Mango Joe's back here will get demolished and they'll re-theme the whole area around the wild arctic area. But something else they've done is they've actually finished all the work they were doing over here. So they were for a long time doing some work over in this area. And now they made a bunch of like little games. So, yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, so the so I guess the coaster I mean, it's been officially announced now that there is a tw coaster coming in 2020. So that means that this whole area could be demolished and be built for this coaster that they're building. Now, I don't think it, it's going to be very, I think it's going to be very tool towards a family coaster, but there has been talk that they could actually renovate some of this area and make it more for the animals that are in here because they do have the wild Ar Ar Arctic area which has all the animals, stuff like that. I mean, they did have the teaser, like I said. They did have the teaser that SeaWorld posted, and I'll, I'll leave a link to their Instagram and Facebook to show you what they would have teased as. But it, um, nothing else has been announced, so I don't think we'll see anything until probably IAPA this year. Honestly, IAPA, maybe when we see like all the stuff with the Guazi out in Bush Gardens and this new uh, coaster that's coming to SeaWorld, that's, I think it's going to be themed towards a uh, an Arctic bird of some sorts. Maybe. I don't know. It's going to be really cool though, it's the fact that they are adding another, they've been doing a lot of work in the parks the last couple of years. I mean this year we got Sesame Street, next year we're getting a new coaster and a new re-theming of an area, so definitely kind of cool, but again, nothing, not, not much information other than that, so. Um, I guess we'll head into the Wild Arctic and go to the walking tour. It looks like they, the um, simulator's down today, so we're, luckily we don't do the simulator, so we're going to do the walking tour. A couple blue whales swimming in the ocean. Not really an ocean, but... I mean, they're swimming in a good cold water. Oh, there's a seal. Sausage. Floating sausage. That's funny. Cool. Yeah, there is. I, I have usually only there's only one, so. Cool. Look, there's <laughs> there's a there's a seal over there. It's actually interacting with an like, older couple that's over there playing with it. Cool. And you have this one right here, just kind of going, "What's going on?" Kind of curious. They're very, uh, they're very active today. Normally when we walk in, they're kind of all just pass asleep. Yeah, or just swimming around. Yeah. This one is, uh, I think he's supposed to climb out of the water. 
Uh, nope. He decided nope. So, Garfield's in here today. Uh, Koo and Ginger are not, and I, I do think uh, Caboodle will not be out for some time because she is pregnant. But we haven't heard anything about, yeah, with another with the second baby that'll be born here in like a year's time. Two years time, actually. Um, but I was kind of hoping we see a Koo and Ginger because we really like seeing them. Um, but just Garfield, and he's asleep in the corner in his little cave over there. He's passed out. I mean, when you have to deal with the kids all day while Caboodle is getting ready to have another one, he's probably just thinking of all the sleep he's going to miss out again. I find it they, funny. They like, look like torpedoes, you know, those little, like, toys that you oh, throw yeah. in the, in That's the water? The, I mean, torpedoes. except these two that are kind of just wrestling in the middle. <laughs> They're just spinning. I like that. It's just funny. And the rest, they're, they're, well, I guess all of them are out today because they're really active. It's really cool, actually. Yeah, the whales are active, too. Yeah, they are. Usually when everyone else is inactive, the walruses are really active. So, just came out of the wild Arctic area and came back up towards the restrooms up by Mango Joe's. There's a wall up now. So, we were wondering, and this is kind of just my theory, is that they say select nights, but maybe they're starting out with just doing weekends to start doing work on this coaster because this coaster has to be built by 2020 so it's got to be done by December and since there's been no movement yet and we're in the middle of 2019 they got to get started on it like now now they could have been doing more work behind the scenes but but no information who's building it who's what's it going to be all it is it just says as Ellie says soar to new heights but it shows some of the arctic polar bear with two cubs I remember taking a photo when I was a kid. Hmm. So, but yeah, really, really nothing seen. That's why I just now we see the walls. So maybe this is the start of it. So, so it looks like they also have some more walls right here. I guess I don't know for what for, but this, yeah, this might be a new area for a coaster. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know because again, nothing has been announced, and I just feel like this park doesn't have that much space. They announced that there is going to be a new coaster in 2020. But they didn't announce anything else besides that. No, they didn't announce what it was going to be, who was making it. All they said, new coaster, soaring to new heights in 2020, but it showed an Arctic theme, so... Um, yeah, because it had, like, icebergs and everything. Yeah. Not sure, though, to be honest. I guess we'll just see when it comes out. That's why I'm thinking Ayapa's going to be a big time this year, because it will probably debut all the stuff with Guazi over in Bush Gardens, and then... If Probably. you guys follow them on Instagram, they have it on Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. Well, so I told him I would leave in the comments, in the, in the, down below about the, I would like try to leave a link for it so that people could just part, they can just go right to it. Oh, but it doesn't show much, and I really don't like showing stuff like that. That's not mine, so. <laughs> but yeah, definitely something we'll have to keep an eye on. So now that we've uh, gone over to Wild Arctic and we've talked about the new coaster, I thought we'd come over here towards the Waterway Grill and uh, go to the Lap Householder Lounge. Also, let's see what the wait time is for Infinity Falls on a very hot day like today. Soda. Yeah. Five minutes for Infinity Falls today. That's not bad at all. Like, honestly, if we wanted to do it, this would be a good day to do it. It's come out middle of the week on a very warm day. So, but we're actually going over to the lounge to get some soda and sit down for a little bit. So we always forget that the Passport Lounge at SeaWorld is only open from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. And so, like right now, it's 11:30. So we have 30 minutes till it's open. So unfortunately, we can't do it right now. We can't go in there right now. Um, but we don't know if we really want to come back over because we only want to stay till that one because it is really hot today. <clears throat> and so, and we don't really want to do um, Infinity Falls because we don't want to get absolutely soaked. So we really want to do Infinity Falls again. I think maybe we'll spend one day where we just come over and we just, you know, we bring like a little bit extra. We bring some extra clothes or something or our bathing suits and we just change in our, our bathing suits and put stuff over it and then ride it and then change back into the clothes we were wearing before. If you're looking for the best time to come to SeaWorld and you're like on summer vacation, if you can somehow swing it to come this first week of June, this first full week of June, I'd say come on out because so Finny Falls is posting five minutes, Mako now is five minutes and, and I, so we saw Kraken earlier, it looks like it was running two trains. So that's probably like gonna be five minutes. I wonder if we can see if we can do the penguin ride, maybe. Now, it would have been fun to do the penguin ride after we did Infinity Falls when we're f wet. Go in there and freeze. No. That'd be funny. Go to the 
shark thing. We can do that. We can go to the shark encounter. And now walking to the bottom of the world of Antarctica. Just wish it was as cold as it was in Antarctica. This heat's uh, brutal. So, oh well. See what, uh, was it Empire of the Penguin? See what it looks like wait time wise. Maybe this one may be the longest wait though because it is cold in the uh, Antarctic room. So, oh wow, yeah, the line's really long. Oh well. The wait for the Empire of the Penguin was like a 25 minute wait and the on-ride was 10 minutes but the line was out the door so I don't think it was 10 minutes. So. So. Look how we see what Kraken looks like. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Journey to Land is going to be a long wait. There's no like, there's just a guarantee of that for sure. So let's see what Kraken looks like. Because it looked like earlier they were running two trains so maybe, maybe it won't be as long of a wait. Well, Kraken Unleash is only a five minute wait, so we're gonna go ahead and throw this stuff into the locker, grab the GoPro, and go right Kraken. So that was definitely a five minute wait right on. They're also running two trains. I was very pleased with that see them running two trains today. So it ended up being a very quick ride. We essentially, we, we only had to wait for one train too as well because we waited for the front row. So we sat for the front row and that's where I got the cool picture, the cool video of us on the front. Plus you can see the whole track. You can see where it shakes a little bit. It is an older uh, B&M coaster. It's not like Mako where Mako is super smooth. Crack is a little rough, but it's showing its age, but it's still an awesome coaster. So we stop over here and we come by the gator, the little baby gators, see the manatees in the sea turtle area. <laughs> so there's some turtles in there. Oh, there's a little gator right there. It's a little tiny gator. It's a mini gator. <laughs> oh, they're all hanging out in the pool. Sounds like a great idea though. Shade, oh, that one's laying on a turtle. <laughs> It's a pillow for him. Look at this one swimming. I like how they swim. Look at his little, arm, like little legs get like pushed back and his tail is what makes him swim. There's, one or, there's two of them right here. Oh wow. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So cute. Of course when they get bigger though, it's they're scary. Ooh, there's one, look, look at the one on the... Oh, that one's falling. And back down. Under the... Oh yeah. There you are, just found you. Look at the manatees, they uh, a bunch of little baby ones and a big one all eating the lettuce. Yeah, you eat the lettuce. Mm. <laughs> there's, 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 it's lunchtime for them, I guess. They're just going. Yummy. Yummy. I know. It's good. They're actually, it's funny, we were up on the, we went over to the rescue section. They're actually, uh, got a couple divers either cleaning their, it looks like they're cleaning their, their uh, tank over there. 
And they got a few actually in the rehabilitation pool, so they're working on them. Oh, that one wants to go through the gate. Oh. It's like, nope, can't go through the gate. So it's like the uh, Key West area, and here's this overlook section that we came to that one time. You can see over into the Dolphin like Lagoon area. So it's, it's a really nice little pretty area. It's, it's like themed towards the Key West. Their giant swimming area over here. Swimming pool. Looks nice and refreshing to be honest on a hot day. Yeah. See, there they are. So you can see them over there. Damn it. Just playing. <laughs> oh, I like the fact, look what they, they've added a bunch of little shaded areas for like, guess when you do the dolphin encounter stuff. Oh yeah. But look at all of them, they're all just in this little area playing. Ooh! Whoa! Oh boy. Oh my goodness. How many are there? There's a lot of them in there. Oh boy. Wow. Probably most of the boys. The boys like the rough house. They're all like, eh. My god. Oh my god, look at this. All of them right here. Jeez. There's a lot of them in here today. Jeez. One of the craziest coasters I feel like they've been built are flying coasters. Give you such a weird sensation because you're facing down. It's like an inverted, but you're le you're like with the with the track. Plus, like that pretzel loop is woof. Definitely, still a cool ride, but man, it, it's one of the slower loading rides. But it gets some of the weirdest sensations. Alrighty, after we saw uh, Ma a Manta kind of running by just because we could, we stopped over at one of the uh, Under the Sun gift shops, which has a lot of interesting stuff. That I actually bought some things for my parents because we are going back to Texas next week for about a week to hang out with my family, go to a, maybe go to a theme park out there, go to a zoo, maybe even a water park depending on the weather because it's supposed to be just as hot there as it is here. So overall, I felt like this was a really good day at SeaWorld. Not very busy just to ride and out of business. We're like, make it, we could jump right on, then we went over. Finney Falls was a short wait, SeaWorld, there was no one at SeaWorld, no one at Wild Arctic. So we were able to go in and do all that stuff, and then like, got to then go over, do Kraken, they were running two trains, so no wait for that either. And then walked around and saw like, the dolphins, the manatees, the sea turtles, stingrays. Really just an overall good morning here at SeaWorld. I really like when it's not this busy, when it's not super busy, because you get a lot done. So, but with all that being said, we do head up from a very fun day here at SeaWorld Orlando. We'll see y'all next time.